Hey, so I've done a video in a little bit, so I kind of want to switch gears and try something different. Oh, um, I got a new Logitech uh, webcam. Because the webcam that's built into the computer is not that great. It's only like 720 or something like that. Uh, this is allegedly 4K. We'll see. But uh, I want to go over... Um, there will be some gun stuff in a little bit, but I want to actually go over books. And why it's important to read. Uh, recently I got done with a couple books. Uh, one took me a year just because uh, I kept putting it off. But I finally got around to finishing it. And it's a great book. In fact, let me start with that one first. Um, so, if you've seen the movie uh, Machine Gun Preacher with Gerard Butler, it's based on true story of uh, Sam uh, Childers, um, who's a um, uh, former biker turned um, preacher, turned basically humanitarian and um, all-around great dude. Um, last year, I went to a concert with Big and Rich, and actually got the chance to meet him and uh, got an autographed copy of his book. Which was the last one he had at that time. Uh, Another Man's War. Really recommend reading it. Um, it. It tells about basically his life and that kind of thing. It was rough and he gave himself to Christ and um, aspects of his life got better but also worse but ultimately better in the long term and this guy's done so much good in the world to saving thousands of kids in a war-torn uh, Sudan and um uh, really genuine dude, very nice guy, um, and my kid met him and she didn't know what to think, and you know, he, he was really good with her, and uh, really, really awesome guy. Um, highly recommend his book, Another Man's War. Um, so a lot of it is like he had his uh, pinch and scrap and save to uh, do a missionary in Africa, and while he was doing that, he started up these orphanages for these uh, child, former child soldiers and victims of in Africa and gave them a place that was stable and a source of uh, stability in that region. And uh, he's met you know, some presidents, some um, African presidents, and has worked with um, a little bit of the State Department and whatnot. And dude's very genuine, down, down to earth, uh, really good dude. Um, he also has, uh, I believe, uh, angelsofeastafrica.org is his website where he takes donations. And it's just a super great cause to get into, and it's a wonderful thing. And how is house is relevant to gun videos and stuff, well, uh, you should definitely watch the movie Machine Gun Preacher. It uh, sums it up uh, pretty good. Um, it is Hollywood eyes, so there's aspects missing, and that's uh, not covered um, uh, as well in the movie as in the book, of course. But um, a dude, you know, knew about guns and stuff, and grew up in a pro-gun state, and uh, you know, shotguns, rifles, pistols, all the usual stuff. And um, he actually worked with the, uh, the Sudanese Liberation Army, I believe, and um, uh, worked with AKs. He worked with a, uh, a guerrilla group that was actually a pro-liberty democracy group, and it was an anti-Islamic uh, caliphate movement. And um, again. Um, uh, YouTube's more than just gun videos. Um, you know, take a macro view, sixty thousand foot view, and uh, you know, look at look into why countries are the way they are, and, and why they're shitholes or why they're not. Um, so you know, he's describing his point of view. You know, he's helping these kids and these horrible stories and the disfigurements they've been through, and uh, what they've done, and some really miraculous, like legitimately miraculous uh, stuff. So, just got done reading this book. It took a year, sorry. Uh, but, awesome book, highly recommend it. Also, watch a movie, uh, Machine Gun Preacher. And uh, a lot of his proceeds go, I think, I'm pretty sure all of them go back to Africa. I think it's one of the largest truck stops. Not like a truck stop, I'm interested. Like a, it's, it's like a Bucky's or something. And, um, I highly recommend looking into that online. Sam Childers is his name. Just put it in, you'll find it. Um, really, really, really cool dude. Um, the, the other thing I got done reading recently, um, and this, this was a lot shorter, this is only a week. It's, uh, and probably like a lot of the proper guys are like, oh, you only just now read this? Uh, The One Second After book by William uh, Forston, who is also a Hoosier, and, um, 
his PhD from uh, Purdue, so that's very cool. Um, really good book. Um, definitely some disturbing stuff in it. It's actually uh, it has a horror by New Gingrich for what that's worth. Um, and it really goes over like essentially there's an EMP that goes off. You're in a you know, relatively small town, like less than 10, 20,000 people in an area. Uh, it takes place in the Carolinas, North Carolina, I believe, in the mountains. And uh, it's kind of like a there's, a there's a town that has a, a small college, and it's just like small town America stuff. And it just goes day by day over what happens for like a month. Then it kind of uh, kind of summarizes a year later. But there's a lot of really, really interesting stuff. Like some of it's a little bit outdated because um, there's been more recent videos about EMPs and their effects on vehicles. And actually, a lot of more modern cars will work. You just have to pull the battery out and put it back in. Kind of basically reboot it. Um, you know, but your Tesla's, it's fucked. <laughs> your Tesla's not going to work. But, um, like, in this one, he drives an Etzel. But uh, my understanding, there's been other videos. Canadian Prepper did a series of EMP videos about how, you know, basically if you have, like, a, an 86 to, I don't know, 2010, I'm, I'm generalizing car, um, it, it, it could potentially be safe and fine but it's just really important um highly recommend this book really good book it's got a little bit of military stuff to it um as far as like the, the guy the character within is like a professor who's a former colonel who's um more of an academic and never really led like frontline action that kind of thing ultimately he does though because he's uh he becomes a member of the town council and is basically putting together a team to save the town and uh, triage like uh, medical care the, the medical care is actually one of the best parts of the book is um like what happens like what kind of um ailments are you getting what kind of you know dehydration the effects of uh, diabetes and that kind of thing and how long people can survive it's a little scary book i, I will say that there's a little um it's, it's not toward too many faint people if you get worked up about things in the world um skip through parts of it or maybe don't read it it's uh it'd be pretty intense but life's intense life isn't you know just a pg movie right so uh get over it read it uh really recommend this book too it's it's awesome the books that actually kind of got me to both these books is um a guy named max alexander but this is his first book max floss it was his pen name patriot oh whoop, there we go Patriot Dawn. Really good book. Um, I, I love, I've read it so many times in a sequel. Um, you know, Broken. And he's got a, a training facility in West Virginia. West Virginia? I've been in Indiana too long. And uh, so he does like training courses uh, there in West Virginia and in Texas, I believe. And uh, basically, th this book is um, the, the guy who wrote this is a former um, British uh, paratrooper, I believe. And he worked for the CIA contracting. I think he worked for the U.S. Army a little bit. And, um, so the guy's, like, in his 30s, 40s, um, plane lands. It's, like, a, a fake attack. Uh, and they pull down the grid because the attack is associated with other countries, you know, kind of like today, that are our enemies. And, um, so basically it sets the stage for the country to be rebooted under a more authoritarian uh, leadership than what we're comfortable with. Basically it talks about like, um, he's living in like a subdivision, but he's like a, a former captain. Yeah, in, in the Army Rangers, who are badasses. And um, how he gets out of the area, he meets up with this older gentleman, he used to be a former mentor of his. They start putting together a resistance band against this uh, authoritarian, um, like, fascist socialist group. And uh, really cool. There's a lot of military attacks and tactics. Uh, some prepping stuff, too, that kind of thing. But this is more for, like, if, if you're, like, a, a big fan of the military, like, and tactics and strategy. Uh, highly, highly recommend this book. A lot of stuff you can learn from it. And uh, this one really more so is more of a prepping book, I would say. There's some military history to it, that kind of thing. But, um, yeah, um, really interesting series of books. Um, I really wish they'd make some good movies about this. Um, what we would really need is, like, an independent film studio that's not afraid to, uh, you know, 
take some heat from putting out some really good product. Um, anyways, I just figured I'd switch it up this time and um, talk about this guy here. She got a preacher. Um, anyways, now it's just been uh, on my mind lately to talk about boats, especially the way uh, the election's coming up and people get high strung and worried and stuff about what's going to happen. Um, you, you should not think like a meteor's coming next week or whatever. But you should look at some of your news online to find out what the situation is with people around the world. Actually, series you can learn from uh, in a bad way, but also a good way. Uh, series Narcos, season one and two specifically. Really interesting. You see the rise of basically a, a drug kingpin. But think about it this way. And collapse the society, he'd be a warlord. And you can kind of see how a person like that would influence and move up. And when they start putting, they had like some good intention, or at least lying to themselves, at a certain point, they're just like, screw it, it's all ego, and I'm just going to do whatever. Then you can see the downfall. You see a lot of that in history. Uh, once your ego starts right, checks that your morals can't, then you kind of screw it. Mm. Book stuff aside, uh, just a moment. Okay, so I do have my favorite here, my general purpose rifle. And something I did recently with this, um, there's a lot of like flash killers and hex caps you can get for a lot of different optics, but there's a lot that you can't. So you're kind of screwed, you don't. It's important if you go shooting, and you want to take it more seriously that um, uh, the deflection off glare of lenses is an important thing to know about. So what I did was um, I took the the netting that you use for like a, um, a snake pattern or a hexagonal pattern uh, camo pattern on your rifle, and I just cut off pieces of it and put it in tape. So now I have. Fabric kill flash. Uh, this is metal. This is one I actually got from uh, uh, what is this? Primary Arms. He's Cyclops. So that that's fine. But my uh, 3x all of a sudden here, you can see, it actually works really well, and I'm pretty impressed with it. Um, and it's just a really quick thing. You just take a piece of the uh, the fabric and you just cinch it over tape it off. Also, two other things I'll talk about as far as uh, gun camo. Um, so, you painted your rifle, right? Well, also, I like to put on areas, right? I know I can't get camo form tape. I'll put uh, Gorilla Tape Camo Tape, which is just camo duct tape. And I put it, and it kind of ruggedizes and protects it, and um, you know, the only thing you want to be exposed is like your turrets and your switch turn your um, light optic on and off or whatever. That comes in handy. Also, your camo form tape. Uh, I like to wind mine kind of close. I'm only like 5'8", guys. I'm not huge. And this is just like a, a reminder, just kind of like in my cheek load here. And I can fill it between the uh, soft plastic. And this, it's got texture to it. It's just kind of like a physical reminder, and uh, helps me have a repeatable position. And also, um, say you're laying low in the grass and you want to reduce your signature, you kind of do want something like this um, because it's a matte finish. It doesn't shine as well like during the daylight, so it doesn't reflect. That might be the only potential problem with the camo tape, as you can see in the video here. You can see like. It's kind of whiting out, a little glary. But um, I see take it outside, shoot it, and get the dirt and the mud and stuff. It'll get you know a natural dullness to it. It'll uh, nature's mat. So I really recommend that. Also, it's just a BC on hand stuff. And I just you know I put a couple extra batteries in a, uh, a wipe in here, and I just taped up the bottom of it because this was actually the plugged version. So I made, just made my own. And just, you know, learn to improvise with your stuff, guys. You know, learn what works for you. Um, that kind of thing. Uh, I've just got a ranger band here to keep my sling and toe when I use it. 
uh, or not using it actually. And uh, really, that's a lot to say about this. I just really like this rifle. Anyways, so to recap, get out there and read. Read, read good books. There, there's a lot of really shitty books out there too. So you have to be aware of that. Um, I, th I think, um, oh, for goodness sake, he just did a video. Mm. Shoot. Stoker. Stoker. He just did a video on uh, uh, Attica. Is it, or not Attica. It's Athens, Tennessee. And now they had like a, a mini coup uh, after World War II because of some uh, corrupt bureaucrats or something like that. Um, that that's a perfect example. You know, learn from history, you're doomed to repeat it. History may not repeat, but it surely rhymes. Uh, Mark Twain. Um, you, you can make time. If you have time to drink a beer or have a coffee or whatever, just read, you know, a few pages a day. It's, had to be a lot of five ten pages a day that's nothing um you know you have to educate not only your physical self and you don't get healthy or try to uh, i've been slacking on gym this week i'll be fully transparent i have been um but i need to get better i probably should have gone and done that instead of making this video but whatever anyways um improve on your body physical healthy um i would recommend on a treadmill run a mile it doesn't matter the time. Just run the mile. That's your goal. And then kind of figure out what workout plan you're going to go with. Um, I would say this. You can't bench press your way into victory. Um, unless you, you're planning on carrying like 150 pounds of gear and, and drag people constantly. That's unrealistic. Um, get strong. Practice your strength. But this isn't like, not everyone has to be Brock Lesnar, right? So, work on your physical self. Work on your, your mental self. Read. Read books of various topics and interests. I have books on this. I have Lord of the Rings, uh, Narnia. I got books on uh, languages of Lithuanian, because I'm Lithuanian descent. And uh, the Odyssey, uh, the, the Iliad. Um... I uh, have some Tom Clancy book stuff, um, um, just all kinds of stuff. Uh, books on philosophy and theology because I'm, you know, Orthodox. So mix it up. It doesn't just have to be like uh, fantasy all the time. Um, you can learn something from any book and apply it to your everyday knowledge. So work on your mind, work on your body, and if you can't work on your spirituality, your soul is once you learn to basically and you don't have to like you know write perfect one it, you're working on all three at the same time and just gonna move in different order and uh, that's that's what I recommend it's kind of like my uh, nerdy video but uh, yeah that's about it uh, next things that are going on I actually need to uh, shoot maybe this week and I'm probably gonna do that with my general purpose rifle um, I decided my scope rifle for 100 yards and it does pretty good Though I will say, yeah, the 55 grain FMJ is definitely a 3 to 4 MOA uh, projectile. And, uh, well, that's military standards. Um, so I'm thinking about getting a 75 grain uh, AAC round, both till open hole point. So I'll probably use that as my rounds for my scope rifle. My 55 FMJ, I'll use my other two. Um, where am I going with this? Oh, magazines. So. Just empty magazine here, and if you have a scope rifle, if you're doing like scope rifle course or whatever, you'll notice that um, it's a little big. Um, so I might get a 20 rounder, right? And I was also thinking the idea of um, uh, there's these clear mags, and you can stack them, two of them with each other. And and the reason behind that is it's shorter. You don't have to crouch down as much. You can actually get further down, I should say, and so. It might be uh, an interesting idea to have a couple of uh, dual mag 20 rounders in your kit for like a scope rifle or not. Just just an idea, just an option. And uh, uh, keep some of those on hand, right? Uh, anyways, I've rambled on enough today and I think that'll do it. You guys have a happy post-4th of July. Bye.